Hey guys, you guys, uh, you good with us starting just a little bit early? Shh. Hey, hey everybody. Wait for it. There we go. All right. So I am Greg Soul. Who are you guys? Yeah? Yeah. I know a couple of faces, friendly ones. All right. All right. I guess everybody doesn't want to share. Uh, so this is going to be accessing geolocked content the easy way. In the legal way, obviously. Who am I? Uh, Greg Soul. I've got some certifications. I work for a data center group as well as do consulting. I'm an author for lynda.com, LinkedIn Learning. I love doing educational stuff. Hey, there's a guy. Oh, can you hear me now? Excellent. Hey, let me get right on the mic. How's that? Yeah. 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 Got to get deep with it. Uh, so, yeah, that's a little bit about me. There's some hubris. Check. We can move on. Uh, something I'm proud of is the Brothers Wisp. It's a podcast we do. And so we, there's a bunch of us here. There's a bunch of guys in the Little Brothers Wisp. So we have a Patreon. There's one right over there. We have a Patreon account. You jump in and you get access to our patron only Slack where we have lots of memes and GIFs and things like that. But it's an amazing environment to ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Doesn't matter how new you are, you have something to contribute. So love it, jump in there. It's a pretty interesting community we're building. A lot of weirdos. Not me, of course. So some assumptions associated with this. You're familiar with Winbox, the Microtik interface. Uh, you know what basic configurations are and how they work. You have some understanding of what VPNs and tunnels are. I'm going to go over a little bit of that here in a minute. And uh, you like watching streaming TV. Uh, I really enjoy it myself. So here's my predicament. I'm traveling outside of my native country, right? So this is why I want to tunnel geolock stuff back. It's not that I super enjoy British TV in an unhealthy way and I want to watch that constantly. It could never be that. Uh, so the content I want to watch is geolocked. And what is geolocked? It's basically uh, the content providers know what IP address you're coming from and they want it to be in a certain region, right? Wanting to be in North America. So Netflix, uh, Hulu, a lot of those guys are uh, really fickle about that kind of stuff. So I want to be able to access it from anywhere as well as uh, in my scenario here, I'm traveling to Australia. I want to be able to access my uh, American TV as well as access the Australian stuff at the same time. And I want to do it all from a Roku because I'm super lazy. I just want to hit with a remote. So I've got kind of a dumb device, right? And I want it to be as easy as possible. The idea for me was I want it to be so easy I could give it to my mom or my grandma and she would know how to make all this stuff operate. So here I am. I'm in Australia and I can't get to my US content. Pretty straightforward, right? Obviously, they're on the other side of the world, dude. Everything's flipped. Um, pretty standard. i assuming you guys have tried to access video content from overseas and it did the same thing, right? It's sorry. It's not available in your region, something to that effect. All right, so what do you do? You create a VPN tunnel. What is a VPN tunnel? It's basically a logical conduit through the internet. Right? So you create a theoretical tunnel that pops you out somewhere else. Right? And so when you get to that somewhere else, you can assume the identity of that remote IP address. So there's a lot of VPN types, and Microtik supports a ton of VPN uh, type. Some of them are secure, right? Some of them aren't, right? So if I'm just streaming uh, video, do I really care if it's encrypted one way or the other, you know? If it's uh, more encrypted, generally that's going to be done on the CPU of the Microtik. So the more encrypted it is, the more resource intensive that sort of traffic is. So keep that in mind. So in my scenario here, um, I really don't care. So I'm going to try and keep it as unencrypted as possible. Also, there's certain VPN types that uh, really want you to know what the static IP is on either end, right? And then there's others, say, for example, PPTP, L2TP, OpenVPN, that don't really care uh, what one of the neighbor sides is, right? As long as uh, me over here, I can get to that guy, I know what his IP address is, it's cool, right? Kind of that dynamic establishment. So, no encryption, really low throughput, right? Like four or five megabit stream. You know, I'm going to use 
really anything on here. And so I go the lazy route and I just use PPTP because it's one of the lighter ones. So VPN endpoint types, you can, uh, if I'm out abroad, I can tunnel back to my home router, right? That's one option. Something to keep in mind though is your upload. Say you have DSL at the house. So even if you have 30 megs down, if you've only got one meg up and you're doing a tunnel, all that traffic has to come to your router and then hairpin back out. So you're going to get bottlenecked at your upload. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you're uh, a little bit more adventurous, you can go to a VPN service like PureVPN or ExpressVPN. These guys have VPN nodes all over the world and you can pay them a small fee, sometimes a moderate fee, and connect to any one of these servers so you can assume the identity of an endpoint anywhere. But if you just want to watch British television, it's not a big deal. You just need, you know, a UK. For anybody listening that uh, wants to be friends with me, um, the problem with these services is they tend to get blacklisted, right? They'll, uh, the streaming media companies, they're no fool. They know what subnets, you know, these people have, and so they will tend to block list chunks of IP addressing. You can also tunnel to a data center. So if you know a guy who works at a data center, make friends with him. Or if you know an ISP that has infrastructure, make friends with them. You can drop a router in their location. It's usually very consistent, uh, especially if you're using Microtik kit. It's going to be super stable, right? No worries there. And also, you don't run into blacklisting issues, right? So here's my configuration. I'm in Australia. I'm going to create a VPN tunnel to my American router. And I'm going to take my Roku, 192.168.10.100. And I'm just going to shove everything from him through that tunnel. So he will pop out of the US, and it'll be great. I'm going to do PPTP because I don't need encryption, and I don't care about it. I want it to be as light and as fast as possible. Uh, tunnel the Roku, NAT, all of the Roku's traffic. Ah, fairly straightforward. So unlike Steve Disher over there, I made my presentation about three weeks ago. So I don't have my video 100% memorized. So I'm going to kind of wing it here. Because I don't do it live. I make a video of it, and then I replay said video. Not a crazy person. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to do a trace route. So this is my streaming service right in my lab, 16501. This is the streaming, right? So from Australia, you can see it just goes one router, and then it's to the, the virtual streaming service. So that's kind of my guinea pig. This is going to be my Hulu, my Netflix, whatever it happens to be. So now I'm going to create my tunnel interface over here on the USA router. PPTP, enable. Now I'm going to go to secret. I'm going to create a new account. And the name here is going to be Roku. The password is Roku password. It's very secure. It's just for a lab environment. And local address. This is the address that this router will assume when this PPTP connection comes up. Remote address is what I'm going to hand to the PPTP client. So very straightforward. You're not supposed to use those IP addresses, by the way. They're real ones. Uh, then I'm going to switch over to the Australian router. It's super simple. Now I'm going to PPP, create a PPTP client. Give it a name that sort of makes sense. So remember, at this remote address, I need to know what my USA address is. This is what he is. Then I'm going to put in the username and password. Again, I'm leaving everything as default as possible here, just for simplicity's sake. And then eventually I'll click OK. You can see that the little R popped up next to it. That means it's running. You can go over to status. You can see the um, local IP address, which was going to be what I pulled, the remote IP. And now I'm going to do a routing rule here in just a second. First, I'm going to create a masquerade rule. So anything that's going through this tunnel, I want it to masquerade, right? So pat, I want it to appear as if it's coming from uh, the tunnel IP address. This kind of, I could do extra static routes, but this is maximum lazy. So that's what I was shooting for on this. That way, every bit of my traffic that goes through the tunnel will appear as if it's coming from that tunnel IP. So now I'm going to create a route rule. Just kidding. I'm going to create a route first. And then I'm going to give it a gateway of the other side of the tunnel. And then I'm going to give it a routing mark. And the routing mark basically creates a little private routing table that only things you shove into this routing table will utilize. And so it's just for the Roku. Now I'm going to create a routing rule over in the rules tab. I'm going to say, if it's coming from my Roku, specifically that IP address, shove it out of the tunnel. 
and you can do this with lots of different things. Um, sometimes I'll do like IP phones. I'll say IP phones, you always shove these guys through this tunnel, uh, various things like that. It's kind of a quick cheat. So now that we have our Roku, we have our tunnel created, we have our uh, routing table created for it, and the routing rule, you can see when we retest to our service, right, our invisible service, it's actually hopping through the USA router, through the PPTP tunnel, and going through, right? So now we have success, right? So uh, I can actually get through all the way, and I can reach my US traffic. The only problem now is on my Roku, whenever I try and reach the local Australian traffic, I'm getting the problem in reverse. Since everything's going to the US, when I try and access their streaming services, they're geolocked. They're saying, bro, you're coming from the US. You can't get to this. So you have to come up with an interesting solution. I need a simple way to switch it back and forth, right? And my simple solution, I'm calling it a packet switch. I don't know, you could call it whatever you want. Um, what I created were some scripts so that if you browse to 4.4.4.1 inside this network just with your smartphone, it will uh, disable that routing rule, which means it's never going to send that Roku traffic through the tunnel any longer, so you're just going to go and get to the local stuff. Now if you open your phone, you browse to 4.4.4.2, it will enable that routing rule, which will shove everything back through, right? So you can kind of just switch it on and off as you want. And I created this lovely website, as you can see there, a button that says VPN on and VPN off. Uh, it's actually accessible, so if you wanted to use all these scripts, you could just browse this and utilize that. And uh, it should switch it back and forth. So let's add this extra little bit. And anything you see in here that's like script-based, all that's on my blog, so you can just copy and paste. You don't have to try and madly type or do screenshots or any of that stuff. So I created a quick bridge interface and didn't add any ports. That creates a loopback, right? So that's an always up interface, right? It never goes down because I'm going to do some netwatch scripts that are going to do some pinging. So now I'm adding the IP addresses to that bridge interface. I just named it loop1. So 4.4.4.1 and 2, so the IPs we're browsing to. It's going to go straight to the router. So I'm lazy and I paste it in the firewall script. I'll show it to you here though. So in essence, what it does is it's got a couple of filter rules. So these two at the top drop traffic once they make it into an access list. So if it's in the tunnel off access list, or rather address list, it will drop the traffic for that one. If it's in the tunnel on address list, it will drop it for that one. Here's a rule that says if you're browsing to 4.4.1, you're going TCP, add it to an address list tunnel off. Add it in there for six seconds, right? So it'll time out that entry. And here's the reverse of it. If it's going to the dot .2 address, add it to the off address list. So I'm going to go over to NetWatch. I'm going to create a couple of scripts. So what NetWatch does in essence is it will ping a host. If that host goes down, it will perform an action. If that host comes back up, it will perform an action. So in this one, we're going to say you're going to the 4.4.4.1 host. You're going to ping him, I think I said every five seconds. Yeah, there you go. If he goes down, you're going to go to IP, route, rule, set zero, which is the only rule we have in there, disable. So it's going to turn it off. And there is no up rule on this. So I'm going to copy it because I'm lazy. Maximum efficiency is what I go for. So now the other address. If you browse to the dot two, it will turn the rule back on, right? It's super simple. It's just toggling a firewall rule uh, on it, or rather it's toggling the route rule on and off. And you could extend this to do anything. You could toggle anything on and off with this. And I'm actually adding comments so that I don't get confused. Top ones to turn off, bottom ones to turn on. You guys use comments, right? Yeah, you should always uh, put your name, the date, and what the rule is for. That way other people can get mad at you in earnest. So here I'm just going to kind of line up all the windows so you can see everything work in action. So we've got our route rule, got our firewall rules showing the address list. So right now I'm going to my phone and I'm browsing to that lovely web page you guys just saw. And I'm clicking the VPN on off. You see that it popped in into the address list, which means it's blocking traffic to 4.4.4.1. 
up at the top, you saw the NetWatch script say, oh, this went down, perform the down action, which was turn the rule off. Now I'm going to go back to my phone and click 4.4.4.2. It's going to create the address list, which will drop all the traffic in the firewall. So watch the highlighted NetWatch up there in the top right. See, it says down, and then down at the route rule, it enabled it. It's really that simple. So I will then cut to the uh, trace route so you can actually see it work in earnest. So there it is going through the USA. And I'll go over and I'll perform the same ritual again. I'll tell it to turn off. It's going to pop in the address list in just a second. There it goes. The NetWatch script, we'll see it go down, perform the action, disable the rule. So really, so simple, you could tell your grandma, hey, bookmark this site on your smartphone or on your laptop. Go to the thing, click on, click off. And there you can see the tunnel's disabled and the routing rule no longer takes precedence. So it just goes straight out of the uh, normal, just takes the normal routing table and goes out. So there were some alternatives I thought of. You could do a layer inspection, layer seven inspection uh, rule in the firewall that would send a logs message and then you could have these scripts running every so often that would comb through the logs but that was very complicated and a little convoluted. Um, you could also use an external website, right? You could configure a web server that would then remote into your router and make adjustments manually, something like that. You could open Winbox directly and do it or uh, maybe just not watch so much TV, uh, local or remote, either way. Um, I also was thinking of, you know, alternatives you could use for this. So one thing I actually use this for is, um, you guys ever heard of this thing called Fortnite? It's somewhat popular. And so my kids, as soon as they would get home, they want to just jump on the Xbox and play Fortnite. So I have a firewall rule that's disabled by default, right? Their Xbox can't get to the internet until they do their homework. And then mom opens up the specific website and then clicks. Yeah. Okay. You did your homework and then they can get on. So you can kind of extend it to really anything else you can imagine. I'm sure there's other alternative ways of doing this. I'm just not clever enough to figure them out. I would really love, and this is a, a request for Microtik, I would love a system kind of like NetWatch where it just would look through the logs and anytime it saw something in there, you could have it perform an action like natively without having to try and do some scripting kung fu. That would be really convenient. I mean, imagine how you could extend that. You know, an interface goes up, interface goes down. Um, uh, a failed login session happens. You know, all these actions you could just easily kick off would be really cool. Um, at this point, that's kind of it. I know it sort of went fast, but uh, there's a lot of diagrams in all my blog posts. I've actually got all the diagrams, all the configurations, kind of a rehash through everything. Do you guys have any questions about any of that? All very legal activities, and you guys would never use this to circumvent any laws because if you are actually traveling abroad, this is perfectly legal for you to do. Roku's are interesting. They're actually region locked. So if I have anybody in the UK that maybe wants to befriend me, uh, just shoot me an email, anything like that. Uh, one last thing, come and say hi to me. Tell me who you are, tell me your story. I love meeting people, that's why I come to these things. Um, anybody else that are in the Brothers Wiz, say hi to those guys. You know, it's one of the big parts of why we come here. At the last, there's links to all the things. And uh, if nothing else, I guess thank you guys. No questions for sure?